Hey everyone, Terry here. Uh, hope you are in safety and comfort of your own houses because today's episode is special. Uh, it's a Zoom call together with the CEO of Coop Mobility, uh, Mats Hubert. He, he talks about the rise and fall of the share mobility giant Coop, as well as a bit of his, about his personal life and his plans for the future. Hope you will enjoy and get some value from it. Yeah, so uh, what I did in the past was I tried to bring Bart into the world of mobility services. So completely build it up a holding for uh, B2C mobility services, including Coop. Um, internationally and other mobility services. But uh, at the end, Bosch decided to step out, out of the B2C uh, mobility business because they want to concentrate themselves more on being a supplier for other mobility companies, for the big guys. Um, yeah, this was, and this was the moment when I clearly decided as well, okay, that I uh, do something by my own because I am completely passionate about mobility and this is why I believe that there can be a lot more things to be done. Um, and then of course I thought about okay what can I do and then of course because I uh, had experiences in the sharing businesses I had some friends who uh, develop uh, very cool and high-end uh, electric kick scooters so we were uh, close to say up okay so let's start with a another sharing company for kick scooters but then we, yeah, yeah, we thought about, hmm, well, we have, um, we have Beer Bird, we have uh, Tear, we have Lime, we have Boy, we have tons of e scooter sharer, and there is no real USB of them. Maybe one is red, one is um, uh, green, one is uh, purple. So, so the USB of them, I don't get it. Um, they mainly use the same vehicle. Um, the app is looking quite similar, so uh, at the prices are completely comparable. So this is why we are saying, okay, we not want to have another Me Too product. And then we figured out something new because from my group experience, I really learned very hard that uh, the operations costs are the by far biggest, say, uh, needle point which makes it a profitable business or a, let's say, not profitable business. And yeah. so here we de develop the solution where we can lower the OPEX of all sharing companies from e-bikes, e-scooters, e-mopeds um, down to uh, remaining 10% uh, of the original cost. How did this whole coup idea started from, from, did you like go to the, Seagull Gora, how they do it in Asia, and that wanted to bring it to Europe, or how did it all begin? Um, no, we we clearly said that we wanted something like um, sharing, mobility sharing, um, mainly um, yeah, B two C sharing. And then it was clear if you were at Bot, it was impossible to do something like sharing with cars because if you're doing so, then you are in direct competition with your big OEM customers. So. Car sharing was completely out of scope. Um, and then we clearly said, okay, well, what is the next sweet spot? Um, for bike sharing, as a company like Bosch, we said, okay, well, mm, uh, so the total revenue potential for pure bike sharing is not much because you have a lot of offers which are um, completely for free um, or the uh, revenue potential is pretty low. Um, and then we said, okay, well, the ideal sweet spot can be e moped sharing. We saw it with um, the system from um, San Francisco. And so this was not a real free flow system. It was more or less a stationary free medium system. Then we said, okay, well, if we go into this direction, we need a premium product. And then it was very obvious that we figured out what is the definitely best product um, in the market. It was the Gogoro scooters. Um, and then we tried to acquire Gogoro as a supplier. And at the end, it worked. And how is it like to grow the whole company like from like a small seed then? Mm, uh, it was, uh, let's say, bumpy ride. Um, on the one hand, uh, we had to convince our internal investor. And, and here you have an investor who is not really knowledgeable what he's doing with an investment. So he knows about manufacturing, spark plugs, and uh, ignition parts for, let's say, hundreds of years. And 
all this new mo mobility topics are completely brand new for them. So you have, on the one hand, you have to build up a business. On the other hand, you have also to educate him with new mobility topics. Um, this was pretty hard. Of course, at the end, then we get our funding, and then you have to start up a company from scratch. Um, we had the fortune, we had the money to use BCG Digital Ventures also as a supplier, and we can use them as a supplier to help us in the, let's say, first seeding phase. Um, but, of, but, of, but at the other hand, it was quite costly. Um, and then you have to yeah, shift the lever to do everything on your own. Every function, every, yeah, every development, everything. And then you have to go into the hiring process and then yeah, immediately you have to think about which city is next. So, and you also had like, yeah, as uh, being there from the start, you had to also build a team somehow from uh, mm -hmm. like make, build the cultures around it as well. How was that as a CEO? Mm, it was quite, let's say, interesting because uh, we do not only have the startup people. Mm -hmm. So I was completely in a sandwich position because I had to um, deal with the startup people on the one hand and on the other hand uh, with the corporate guys because corporate guys gave us the money, so they had all the stupid questions all day and night long, but just are not understanding what we are doing and how we are doing. And on the other hand, you had the startup people, um, and these people are not understanding why these crazy corporate guys are asking so much stupid questions. So it was like a translator to translate with the one world and the other world. So, and then you have to, uh, let's say, uh, monitor, deal, and uh, yeah, communicate all the day and night, and then you have to moderate between all these instances. And like while being the yeah the CEO of Coop, in the in the meantime, how did you like balance the rest of other parts of your life as well on the side? Uh, what rest of my life in this period? Yeah, there was no rest. <laughs> so I had I had I had Coop in Berlin, Paris, and um, Madrid. Then I had also the complete holding. So we uh, did some um, acquisitions with international companies, uh, with ride sharing, with air taxi, and also uh, with other topics. Um, so there was no rest of, of any life. In, in Berlin, for example, there's already quite a few different competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, when they started to enter the market, maybe like Emmy, um, did that bring in more rides or was it then quite competitive? Um, when you think about the market size, so uh, I think Emmy had 500 or uh, something like that um, scooters in the market. So, but what we projected was that the market size was more than three or four thousand scooter big. So, if we so we are just another scooter fera at this moment in time, and the market size was so huge, so um, it was more or less a positive effect because on the one hand. The market was educated because the people know what e scooter sharing was. So uh, this lowered our customer acquisition cost on the one hand. On, on the other hand, um, these customer cohort is very, very open to try out new things. So we had, I, I would guess, we had 80% of our customers were also ME customers, and 80% of the ME customers were also Coop customers. Um, so we educated the market together. And you, you mentioned earlier that the, the operations were like the, the most expensive part. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what kind of, what were the biggest problems that you were running into and what were the, the biggest costs? Um, the best, the biggest cost is let's say, uh, yeah, changing the energy. So uh, changing the scooters or changing the battery um, because this is extremely cost ineffective because you need a lot of human resources. Um, and this is only for, let's say, the, the changing the process directly. But first, you have to uh, locate the scooter. And with the GPS in these actual cities, it's not so easy. So then you have to go to the scooter. You have to drive with something directly there. Then a lot of scooters are not directly findable, then they are not directly reachable. You cannot directly go to the scooter. You have to park somewhere. Then you have to 
carry some battery spare parts to the scooter. And this costs time, and this at the end costs a lot of money because you have to do this by night because by day, um, when the streets are completely crowded full, you're losing so much time in the traffic. Um, and, and you see it also when you look at the uh, numbers from Bird and Lime, um, they are spending approximately one euro 70 per ride per charging, only for the charging cost. Um, we had also costs in millions just for the, um, let's say, making sure that the battery level is acceptable. If you have something or people who are involved and included into the charging process, it, you will never ever make it profitable. And even when you go to battery swapping, okay, or then you have not to, let's say, swap the, the vehicle, you have to swap the battery, then you maybe lower your cost by 20, 30%, but at the end, it's not sufficient. You have to think about something different. You have to definitely bring the customer into the charging process. You have to implement something like user-based swapping, user-based charging, whatever. Without that, you will never ever have any chance to be profitable. And I guess the facing all the charging problems, that's the, why you now shifted to the new startup, your new ideas with the yeah, charging. Exactly, exactly. Because I, yeah, I, I took around two to three months and then I completely looked back what were the biggest, let's say, business challenges within Coop. Um, and there were clearly two. One was a complete customer care, customer service topic. Um, and the other one was a complete operation topic. So well, then how do you see a future of mobility? Um, not one single mode of transportation will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. What you need is definitely that you um, interlock more modes of transportation and uh, the customer is completely or, or must be open to yeah, a choice every day. On one day, he has to go to Ikea, he needs to transport something, then he needs a car for car sharing. Next day, he wants to go a ride with his girlfriend. On a sunny, let's say Saturday, then he's needing a convertible. Uh, next day, he wants to do some um, intra um, um, city trips, then he would use a, a bike, a, a scooter, a moped for a longer distance. You need a complete mix of modes. Um, and this must be controlled, steered, and deployed in an intelligent and smart way. More about you as a person, uh, then uh, what's your favorite book, perhaps? My favorite book is um, from uh, Clausewitz. Um, they are, it's quite The Art of War. German um, high-ranked military guy, it's on Clausewitz, mm -hmm. and um, in, in Germany it's called Vom Kriege, so it's like about war. And what did you take from it to use it uh, in your job then, or life? Um, you have to take more things not personal, mm -hmm. and you have to think about a lot of things more cold-blooded. You can play it like a chess game. Yeah? It, everything has some rules, there are a lot of uncertainties, but um, it helps if you are good prepared and not taking it personal and that you learn out of the error. And this is day by day, day by day, and not thinking that anything is for granted. Is, is that then the quote you live by, uh, or is there another one? So the, let's say, so my, my mantra is more or less, um, who dares wins. Uh -huh. So everything, yeah. Try it out, and then you will find the answer. Mm -hmm. Because you can think hours, weeks, years about a problem, but in reality, normally, yeah, it's a little bit different. And is there like a, some person that inspires you then? I think so. One of the biggest inspiring persons um, is my wife, mm -hmm. because she's handling a lot of things um, in a very, very, let's say, elegant and smooth and calm way, and she also, yeah, and also my, myself. It's happening also myself in a calm way, and this is really, really inspiring. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some value from the video, and I'll see you next time. Henry out.